Hey, Strike Eagle fans, Not So is back with you for another installment of the Razbam Strike Eagle tutorials. Today, I'm going to talk about the upfront controller. It was recommended on um, the Razbam tutorial that I talked about this. And I think it's important because it's one of the foundations for how you interact with the aircraft and how you manipulate a lot of data and how you uh, uh, manage uh, other systems as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down into a couple of different uh, short tutorials about the UFC. So this one's going to be the, the basic overview. I'm going to talk about the, the menu structure itself as well as uh, the keypad entries and the scratch pad, which I'll get into here in a second. And the, the next couple tutorials are going to be a little bit more in-depth and do a couple of the pages uh, that are really important for how you manage the aircraft systems. Uh, there will be other tutorials that will talk about specific systems like the navigation and whatnot that will obviously then bring in the UFC. So I'll, I'll leave that, that part of the UFC alone until I get into those specific systems. But let's talk about the overview of the upfront controller. So upfront controller UFC, uh, as you can see uh, in the front cockpit, uh, it's also mirrored in the back seat as well, exact same thing. And they're actually interchangeable. Uh, I mentioned in an earlier tutorial, uh, may have been the first one, that the UFC is um, replicated front to back in terms of when people, uh, or when the air crew types uh, stuff into the UFC. For instance, if I started typing uh, digits into the scratch pad, it will actually be replicated in the, in the uh, other cockpit so I can actually see real time when the, uh, when the other person is, is starting to type stuff. Um, and it's one of those systems where whoever uh, inputs information last is the, is the winner in terms of uh, if you guys are fighting over a system like the TACAN or IFF or whatever the case may be, whoever enters the information last is going to be the one that wins uh, and that information will stay. So let's talk about the menu itself. So this is um, uh, the, the main top menu is called menu one. I'll get into the buttons here in a second. And then uh, there are two levels of the menus. And then down here, you can see the menu button and the data button. And then there are two levels of the data as well. The key differences there is think of the menu as, uh, as data entry, uh, edit functions, um, changing systems, changing modes, stuff like that. Whereas the data is more informational. You're, you, there's a little bit of stuff that you can change, but it's really more just informational display uh, where you can get uh, data, uh, whereas the menu is uh, is really where I change stuff. So think about that mentality, and it'll make sense when you actually start using it. On the top level menu, you can see uh, the uh, the buttons here are labeled uh, menu or uh, push button one through push button five, and then over on the right side, push button six through push button ten. So it basically starts top to bottom, and it goes in a uh, counterclockwise flow around the, around the screens. Um, Part of the UFC here, these are specific to the radios, so the, the little channel knobs on the uh, left and right uh, are to be able to change the radios. I'll do a, a special uh, tutorial on the radio, so I'm not going to get into that specific stuff. And then you've got other uh, knobs here, so to speak, uh, that will uh, affect stuff. So obviously radio volume knobs and uh, brightness controls. Uh, and then down here you've got some HUD, HUD controls as well to uh, control uh, like the HUD video brightness, the symbology, uh, and whatnot. And then there's some specific stuff that are related to the nav FLIR. Again, I'll do a specific video on the nav FLIR itself, so I'm not going to get into those. And at the bottom, this is still considered part of the upfront controller, are the um, master mode buttons. So air to air, air to ground, nav, and, and instrument master mode. And I talked about some of that stuff in an earlier tutorial on the, uh, on the master modes itself. So this is the whole upfront controller. Again, this is replicated exactly in the back seat. The only difference is the back seat doesn't have uh, these HUD control buttons or the master mode buttons uh, as obvious because they don't have a HUD in the back seat. And the pilot is the only one that can control the master mode buttons. But otherwise, everything else is exact, exactly duplicated in the back seat and everything works exactly the same. So on the front top menu, you've got the, uh, uh, this is called the low altitude warning, the law. Uh, this is where you can uh, input a, a specific altitude where you get a voice warning. Uh, so, for instance, if I put 500 feet in uh, and I go below that, uh, Betty will start bitching at me and saying low altitude. And I'm not going to try to replicate her voice because she's far more sexy than I am. Uh, you've got the uh, the TACAN menu here. Uh, I'll go into that 
in really brief detail in a little bit, but I'm going to do a whole tutorial on the navigation that will include TAC in. We've got the IFF menu as well. Uh, again, I'm going to have a, a separate tutorial on the IFF and, and uh, AAI later. And then train following uh, along the bottom. Again, that's going to be a separate tutorial. And then NavFlir is a, um, um, a definite uh, in-depth tutorial that I'm going to do later. Uh, AAI, this is air-to-air uh, -air identification and EID. This is where you can set up the interrogation stuff to interrogate either friendlies or, or bandits uh, as appropriate. There's an autopilot uh, submenu in here and then a steer point submenu in here, which I'm going to do a tutorial here in, in a minute. Um, so i just quickly jump into some of the submenus. So, for instance, in the tack in menu, you can see uh, uh, you can change air-to-air uh, -air uh, transmit receive uh, or receive only, you can turn it on and off. Uh, and again, I'm gonna go into more in depth later. And then notice if I wanna go back out, all I do is just hit the menu button and that's how I go in and out of the submenus there. Same with IFF, I can go in and out of the IFF submenu, set up the different modes and codes and whatnot, and then back out. Uh, same with AAI, uh, autopilot, and then steer point. This is the steer point submenu where you can uh, go in and edit waypoints and, and uh, change stuff. The big thing here is the, the waypoint submenu. If I want to change my current steering, uh, I'll show you that in a minute. You can see I'm, I'm steering to steer point one. Uh, down here in the uh, HSI, you can see I'm steering to steer point one, and that somewhat matches in the, uh, in the HUD. Realize I've got an air-to-air -air master mode set up, so you're not going to have quite as much detailed uh, uh, informational stuff for the nav, but if I switch over to nav master mode, now I'm going to get a lot more data in that. Um, and again, I'm going to go into more in depth on the uh, on the, the steer point submenu, but I can change the, the steer point itself. So if I want to uh, change, to say waypoint two. Notice I'm steering waypoint one. Waypoint two up here is an IP, so that's just a standard steer point. So just type in two in the scratch pad, and then I can change the steer point out here. And then notice the the waypoint symbol jumps, and the, uh, the uh, HSI then replicates that as well. Um, Notice we talked, we referred to the scratch pad itself. So the scratch pad is um, where you enter all the data uh, for, uh, for different stuff. There's a couple uh, cool features about it. So uh, if, if I uh, type a whole bunch of stuff in, let's say I go one, two, three, four, five, six, and I go, hey, I really meant to do one, two, three, four, five, seven. If I hit clear, it just clears the very last digit out. And then I can type in what I really want. So that way you don't have to start all over if you just make a mistake. If you make a mistake and you want to clear the whole thing out and start over, again, you hit the, uh, the very last button, one, two, three, four, five. It should clear the last digit and then the second push clears the whole thing. Another thing it will do is if I make an error or if the, if the data is invalid for the, the, the button I'm going to push, for instance, let's say I try to do a... Um, uh, lat long, so uh, notice it's it's I have the shift key for the upper character, so one is the the normal, and then A is the shift, and then shift for north. So let's say I'm going to do a, a lat long entry, so shift north, and then uh, 250769, and let's say I try to enter that in steer point. Obviously, that's an invalid entry. It will now flash to say, "Hey, dumbass, you just tried to put something wrong." up and in, into the wrong button, that's an invalid entry. So I'm gonna clear that out. Again, it clears the last digit and then the second push clears the whole thing. If I just wanna put something in there uh, that is valid, so say three point for, uh, if I wanna steer directly to that, it will now take that to uh, to steer directly to three point and, uh, and go in there. Again, I'm gonna go into a lot more detail on the steer point stuff itself. Um, menu two, this is where you can get to the, um, the SIT stuff, uh, G-Quiz, uh, GCWS is the ground collision warning system. This is the very similar to the Hornet where it'll start yelling at you if you're gonna hit the ground. So Betty will say, uh, pull up, pull up, um, if you have that enabled and it's based on some logic of uh, dive angle and, and how long it's gonna take you to hit the ground. This is also where you can turn on the ILS. Uh, so for instance, if I, uh, you can see right now I'm in uh, Dubai, so I'm gonna put in the Minhad uh, ILS for uh, for the um, east-west runway, so that's 110.7, 110.7. And notice I'm not having to put the decimal in 
uh, it will. It's smart enough to know that that's a uh, requires a decimal, so it will do it itself. It'll put the decimal in for you. That way, you don't have to type in the decimal. There are other things that do require the decimal, but the vast majority of stuff does not. Uh, so that's a kind of a cool thing that um, will save you another button push. So that that's how you turn on the uh, ILS. If I go back out to the main menu, if I wanted to put in the the Minhad TACAN, I can just turn on, just type in ninety nine for the Minhad. Put it in there. Bang! Now the the TACAN turns on. It not only does it turn on, but it also puts it in transmit receive. And now notice over here, I've got now the TACAN data uh, for the uh, for the Minhad TACAN. And you can see it's just behind me there with the TACAN symbol three miles uh, on my six. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into a lot of NAV stuff, but I just want to show a quick interface with the with the UFC. Where if I'm in, um, uh, say, TACAN, and this applies to other screens as well, it's not just the HSI, but I can manually input stuff directly into the HSI. So notice I can uh, I can use up and down arrows to change the little heading bug that's going to move around. Sorry, or I can do the same with the course arrow up and down. But the cool thing is I can do a direct entry for the uh, for the tack end so or for the heading bug. So if I want to go two six nine, bang, and that'll put me on two six nine. And you can see if I scroll up, you can also see that replicated in the HUD as well. Um, and that applies to both the course I can put in, uh, say, uh, 050 for the course, and it'll add that in uh, for the course stuff. So that's how you can interface with different screens through the UFC is by typing in the scratch pad, and it'll put the data directly into it if it's one of the buttons that will allow that sort of entry. Okay, so that's the menu one and menu two buttons, uh, or menus, and the, most of these have submenus uh, below, just like we talked about. Uh, into the data, remember I said this is more informational. So if I go data, uh, it will tell me the, the waypoint that I'm currently steering to. This is the, the, the range and bearing to, uh, to that steer point. This is an ETA to that steer point. Uh, and then notice if I'm in the um, uh, nav master mode, I also have the ETE. So this is going to tell me I'm basically going to get to steer point. I'm going to go to the tack end. Let me switch back to nav. It's going to take me a minute, 29 seconds to reach steer point one, and I'm going to arrive there at 04, 24, 53. Uh, the cool thing is I can actually swap that. So if I push this button, that swaps in the HUD, so now it puts ETA in the HUD and ET in the, um, uh, in, the, in the data one menu. A lot of pilots will usually fly with this data one menu open, especially if they're doing a, a low level or a, like a TOT type of timing stuff where they can get uh, time and, and uh, steer point information to the to the, the points. Also notice up here in the in the HUD, I've got ground speed as well as my calibrated airspeed in the HUD. Down here in data one, it will also show you the tack ant, I'm sorry, the uh, the true airspeed uh, to the uh, to that point. And again, I can swap those. Notice when I hit the button, it turns asterisk, so that's what's displayed up in the HUD, and then the ground speed is still displayed down here. Uh, I've got current wind at my altitude, so that's a, a real-time wind, so I can see what the wind is uh, for me right now, and this is the current clock time, and this is the uh, the radar altimeter. So notice the R next to this. So it says I'm 9710 uh, AGL above the ground, uh, and if I want to display that in the HUD, I can just hit that button, and with the asterisk now, that's now displayed in the HUD. If I want to remove it, I can just hit the button and bang, uh, that goes away. The data two is more for. Um, this is kind of a deeper level uh, menu where uh, it's it's gonna you're gonna put a couple different points in. Let's say I want to do a TOT to a target, I can put in a TOT, and it will tell me the uh, the estimated time and estimated fuel that I'll get uh, to those points with. Uh, that's still work in progress, so that's being fleshed out. So uh, we're not going to go into in depth on that. So that's the that's the UFC in a nutshell. Uh, hopefully that makes sense in terms of how you navigate around it. And again, I'm going to do a tutorial on the uh, steer point radio and, uh, and other stuff in uh, upcoming tutorials to go into a little bit more in depth on how you uh, enter data. So hopefully that makes sense. And uh, Notso's out. We'll uh, talk to you soon on the next one. See you. Bye.